Hi guys, it's Editing Evie here. I just wanted to pop on quickly before the podcast starts and apologise for the technical issues in this week's episode. There are a few moments where the video is a bit laggy and our speech doesn't match up with what we're saying. Um, And there's also a few moments where the sound is a bit crackly and you can't exactly hear what we're saying. I've tried my best to edit out as many of them as possible, um, but obviously the important thing is the content and I want to keep as much content in for you guys as possible. So please bear with us. This is just what happens when two amateurs with no money decide to start a podcast during a pandemic. So eventually, fingers crossed, we might get some proper equipment. But until then, please just bear with us. Um, But anyway, I hope you enjoy the podcast. Let's get to it. I will say, when I was editing the last week's episode, all I could look at were my dark roots. I love it. Really? I mean, looking at mine now, and we've got some serious colour difference. Yeah, this is what three lockdowns will do to your hair, but... It looked really good last time, you know. You just needed to whack on toner. Yeah, true. That Oh, that was a nightmare. My hair went orange, yeah. I don't know if I can emotionally go through that again, to be honest. Even though it looks fine, like from here downwards, it looks lovely. Golden blonde, love it. Just do the roots. Yeah, could do. But then will they go really bright and then this will be really bright and then this is dark? That's the risk. I don't think it looks bad. I think it looks fine. I think I'm just going to let it do its thing. I'm hoping that yeah. come the summertime, hairdressers will be fine. Fingers crossed. Oh my word. High expectations, Evie. High expectations. I know. I'm just trying to stay optimistic. Manifest but... that good vibe. Welcome back. Welcome. Hi. Uh, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Sorry for that little interlude. We've had a, yeah, we've had a few technical issues already. We started recording 20 minutes ago and then it just like cut out. So we don't know if we've got any of that footage. So we're starting again. Um, so Imogen, do you want to tell the folks what we are talking about today? Let's just um, let's just pause for a second. Uh, for those that haven't watched our previous episode, I'm Im. And I'm Evie. And this is our little podcast called Let's Be Honest, where we just got a really safe space to talk about anything from being on the moon to our favourite shows, inspirational quotes that help a gal get through lockdown. Um, and we're just being honest, because... What else can we do? Um, so this week, drum roll please. Evie, what do we have? We have <laughs> our favourite TV shows. Yay! And I think, um, if I so, may so... kick us off, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this is a hint. Here you go, folks. Our first TV show, I feel like that. Honestly, I think I watched this in lockdown one, but at this point, it's all blurring into confusion. This show is called, first of all, it's called Shit's Creek. And this was recommended to me by my best friend, Maddie. Um, and she basically loves New Girl, Once Upon a Time. She also loves loads of musicals, but that's a completely different topic that we're not going to get into. <laughs> anyway, but... Basically, I did a semester abroad in Nashville, which is where I met Maddie. And whilst out there, she recommended the show Once Upon a Time to me. I binged Once Upon a Time in the four months, four or five months I was out there, and there's seven seasons. So, productive semester abroad. (laughs) Yeah, super productive. I did loads of work. (laughs) Um, And so, Maddie is always recommending shows and music and all these things. So, Mm -hmm. she recommended Schitt's Creek to me um and at first I was a bit like "Mm, it's very different vibes to once upon a time so like she hit the nail on the head with once upon a time will she hit the nail on the head with Schitt's Creek well let me tell you this show and I think I think both of us (laughs) exactly definitely exceeded expectations this show was a godsend in lockdown like honestly just incredible like a revelation I will never remember life before Schitt's Creek to be quite honest there was and like now pre Shits Creek during, like after, and let's just say definite increase. <laughs> exactly. And now I passed on the recommendation to Imogen and actually several other friends as well. But 
But I mean, it was a long slog for you to convince me to eventually watch it. Oh, it was. I felt quite bad. I was bombarding you probably daily, if not every two hours. Definitely (laughs) daily. But like, I mean, if I'd known that Maddie watched New Girl when you were saying this recommendation, I would have been like, probably is my cup of tea because New Girl is one of my you're having a loungy day you want to watch something really easy I flick on an episode of New Girl um I wish I could say the same (laughs) I know Maddie wishes I could too like I didn't see the appeal but as soon as you just like watch that first episode I remember like sending you a message after I watched the first episode and I was like I feel like I'm gonna like this Mm-hmm. and then when you get through season one because I feel like season one is, is a little bit not slow but obviously with every show they have to you know. build that foundation get those characters going exactly establish a but um should we tell the people in case they don't know what Shit's Creek is about yeah please okay so Shit's Creek follows a family called the Rose family and you have Moira and Johnny they are the two parents and then you have the two kids Alexis and David and basically, they are an extremely, extremely, extremely wealthy family. Um, and they basically, I assume, from what we know, the father, Johnny, enters into a business deal with a friend, someone he knows. And the business deal goes wrong. And the guy, friend, person basically cons Johnny and his family out of all this money and they lose everything. And the important people from the government come along and say, right, this is what you've got left to your name. And the only thing they have left to their name is a town called Shits Creek, which Johnny bought David as a joke birthday present, I think, one year. Yeah. Um, so basically, the important government person basically says, you can go move to this town, live there rent free until you get back on your feet. So that is kind of the basic premise. I think that's good. Um... I think the only thing I'd add to that is, so you've got these four main characters and then obviously people that are like peppered in throughout the show. Some absolute wackos that you'd expect in the like middle of nowhere in America. And each of them has such an iconic personality. You can't help but fall in love with the characters. I fell in love with David and Alexis and each of like the story paths you become so invested in them I like remember crying at some episodes like you go on a real emotional roller coaster um and there are some activities I can't do now without being like that's a shit's creek meme um you know when you're just grating some cheese making some enchiladas folding in the cheese (laughs) yeah anyway if you if you like um, comedies and kind of I guess I guess in a way it's a coming of age story because the so growth true. of the characters from season one to season six is incredible um but yeah and it's a Canadian sitcom for those of you who don't know it's on Netflix um is it also on channel four I think so I think I saw the advert the other day um and I mean they cleaned up capital letters in the Emmys. Yeah, they yeah. absolutely, yeah, incredible. And they, like, they just deserved that so much. So we're very happy for all you Shits Creek people. We love you. It's just yeah. iconic. Um, iconic. It really is. Honestly, just, I mean, I have a mug with Shit's Creek. I have two quotes on my wall of Shit's Creek. I have a t-shirt of Shit's Creek. Imogen bought me a sweatshirt of Shit's Creek for my birthday. I am like, Stan. Okay, the next show is a personal favorite of mine. I've watched it four or five times now. Um, got me through university, pre-hype. So I'm like one of those that was like, I liked it before it was cool and mainstream. Um, is The Crown. <gasps> Where to begin? I feel like let's I just... begin by saying 
well a what it's about because that's important if you don't know and b how it's structured from like season one and two three and four five and six okay for those of you who have been living under a rock for the past like four years or whenever it first came out the crown is all about the royal family um and queen elizabeth the second mm-hmm. yeah second and her reign um so from her first becoming the queen to i think we're now like early 90s late 80s kind of a vibe um we've got one more season left and to be honest two more se- oh, we've got two more seasons what i need to know on a saturday afternoon and it just follows the like iconic british global history through the decades and the events as they happened, both personal and widely affected news events. Um, so from a history point of view, so good. I mean, the last season we had the IRA, we had um, Margaret Thatcher. There are so many events and intricate bits of history that you wouldn't necessarily know, but you've like heard like inklings of that you learned so much more about through this show. Um, and I remember sending my friend a message and being like, oh, it's just so good, you have to. And he was like, oh yeah, I've read the books. And I was sat there like, what? It's not based off books. Obviously he meant the history books. <laughs> um, but it's just so nice for people that maybe want to, not that this is the reason I watched it, but if you want to just like gain some knowledge about Britain world events from the last hundred years such an easy place to start because it makes it so digestible if I'm honest um so we've got Claire Foy and Matt Smith as the Queen and Prince Philip in seasons one and two bravo just first off I just want to say though Matt Smith as Prince Philip I oh oh, I feel so conflicted because I love Matt Smith yeah. But the way that they portrayed him as Prince Philip was like my I, I my jaw was just on the floor half the time yeah. because I was just like I cannot believe the, the way he acts, the way he talks. I was like, you are horrible. So true. But you do start to like him near the very end of season two, and you're like, oh, and then you get used to him, and then someone else comes in. Um but you know what? I was always told the more you feel like personal hatred towards the actor, the better they like nailed it. Because I have to remind myself, yeah, true. Him. Matt Smith is just Matt Smith. Mm. Bit too invested in this. Yeah. Calm down, Imogen. And then season three and four, yes. we get Olivia Coleman. Queen. And Queen. I think Queen. Tobias, yeah, Olivia Coleman, national treasure. Yeah, we love you. Um, we get her playing Queenie and we get Tobias Menzies, I think is his name, playing Prince Philip. Who, iconic. Absolutely iconic. Yeah. Olivia Cox nailed the Queen and she brings just a new level of complexity to this character who's already quite complex. And season four, Maggie Thatcher, Gillian Anderson. Oh, she brings so much depth to a role I can't even begin to start explaining how in awe of her I am from sex education to the crown to the fool the fool yeah the fool gotta be mentioned if you like crime drama watch the fool Mm. kind of creepy but she's phenomenal phenomenal the Meryl Streep of television for sure Meryl Streep of television quote them yeah. Just nothing she can't do. Yeah, not much else to say. And then we've got season five and six, which I don't think they've filmed yet. I do and think we've so. got, I know it's Melda Thornton playing Queenie, but who plays Prince Philip? I don't know. I don't know if they've released that yet. Have they yeah, we knew- I feel like they have, but I just may, I think maybe I looked it up, but I don't know who the actor is. Maybe. I don't. I have to hold my hands up. <laughs> we love we love Imelda Staunton. She's gonna be I I just it's so funny because whenever I see Imelda Staunton, all I think about is Dolores Umbridge. Like that's all I think about. 
you can't help but hate her for that. But she's such a great actress. Exactly. You know what? Bit of a shout out to um, to her. Chichester Festival Youth Theatre. Um, she was doing something at the Chichester Festival Theatre. I think it was Sweeney Todd. I think that's what she was in. Absolutely phenomenal. And I forgot that she was Dolores Umbridge and how much I hated her from that. So I'm excited well, I hope, to see her. Too. I hope that's the case with The Crown because I feel like if she puts on that voice or whatever like i just as long as she doesn't wear pink actually we'll be fine our next show is recent one for lockdown 3.0 yes so, to give you a bit of context um it was henry's turn to pick a series for us because i've just made him watch the last season of the crown um and his friend had recommended money heist i'd heard mixed reviews you know i was so conflicted because some people could not stop telling me how amazing it was other people were like it's rubbish don't waste your time so i'd put it off and put it off and put it off eventually henry wore me down first episode in i just oh my god and i had to tell evie i i sent her a message immediately like you've got to watch this and what episode am I on now? So we started it last weekend and we watched the entire of season one in two days. Um, now feel free to judge, but it's lockdown. So we have nothing to do. Staying Listen, at home I, and saving life. And I started it after you and I'm further ahead now. Like I have, honestly, when you asked me the other day how my day was and what I've been doing, I am not joking. All I have been doing is watching Money Heist so good I and you know what's funny is though is I when I when you recommended it to me I went and I watched the trailer okay and realized but realized that I had watched that trailer like a few years back what yeah because I remember so you know how in the trailer I think it starts saying something like my name is Tokyo it's in Spanish first of all as well it's a Spanish show um, but obviously you can watch it with English subtitles or you can watch it with dubbing. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so... Wait, in the, the whole of the conversation. Yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> um, but in the trailer, it starts off by saying something like, my name is Tokyo and like blah, 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 blah. Okay. And I realised that I had watched that trailer a few years back, but watched it and wasn't really sure what the whole situation was about, didn't really understand what was going on. And when I don't vibe with a trailer, I'm not really going to no. watch the show. Right off. Right yeah, off. Exactly. And so I was like, oh my gosh. And literally when I watched the first episode, I, again, it's actually, it reminds me of how I was with Schitt's Creek. I haven't watched a show this quickly and binged it and been so invested since Schitt's Creek. And but this is like... Intense. Like it's not... Oh yeah. It's not like Schitt's Creek where it's half an hour episodes, easy watching. You can pick it up and drop it wherever you like. This is quite intense. And I, I am... I'm guilty. I've used my phone in TV and films. I need to be doing more than one thing at once. You know what? I'm part of the generation that's had phones. Hate me for it. But I do not go on my phone at all in Money Heist. You can't. You're missing um, stuff. It's so good. And but I was telling so my the interesting about thing. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was telling my mum about it and I was like, um... oh, do you know what? I forgot what I was going to say. You say what you were going to say. It might come back to me. Um, the interesting thing between Evie and I is um, we put it on our TV and it automatically dubbed it with um, English over the top. So I've only ever heard the actors um, speak like no nothing other than English speaking. So someone else talking for them, whereas other people have watched it in Spanish with English subtitles. Now... I think it it depends. However you start Money Heist, you have to stick with what you've done because we watched, I think we watched 10 minutes in Spanish with English subtitles and you get so used to the characters having the voice that you um, assimilate that voice to that you are like, it just blows your mind when they have a new voice. So for Evie, she's only ever watched it in Spanish. So she has a specific voice for Tokyo, for Berlin. I have an English voice for Tokyo and Berlin. Um, and I think it just depends whichever one floats your boat. 
I think I would get so lost if I was having to read subtitles when it's like complex stuff and a lot going on. Um, and to be honest, it's so good dubbed over in English that it wasn't until like episode four that I realised it was, a, it wasn't their voices because there was one word where it was so out of sync. And I was like, wait, is this, is our TV lagging or is there like something else going on? And Henry was like, no, 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 it's supposed to be in Spanish. We're just watching it in English, which blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And just bravo. It's the first Spanish show I've watched. I've watched like German mm -hmm. shows. Um, I think I've watched a few Nordic shows. First Spanish one, amazing. It's, it is incredible. And I will say, let's, okay, let's explain first of all what it's about because we haven't done that. Um, so it's Deep called up. Money Deep. Heist. But in Spanish, it's called La Casa del Papel, which is the house of paper or paper house, whichever way you want to say it. And basically, it's about, is it eight or ten of them robbers? Yes. Eight. And essentially, without giving too much away, it's basically these ten people who use code names. So they use cities for code names, hence why we've been saying Tokyo, Berlin, whatever. And they basically decide to rob the royal mint yes. which is the spanish factories that produce money yeah so we've got one in england and that prints all of our um pound not notes like notes um, yeah everywhere has one so um, it's basically that's basically the premise because without you can't like we can't really say anything else because it's just ridiculous but they basically rob this factory um and I, I remember what I was going to say now. I was saying to my mom, if someone actually did this as a heist, like the mastermind genius level kind of thinking and planning and strategizing is unreal. And the fact that there's screenwriters out there who have obviously come up with this story and obviously in the, in the show, they plan the heist and you see them, it, it goes between flashbacks, narrating and the present and yes. you see how they planned it, you see how they're executing it, and you see what goes wrong and think blah, blah, blah. Um, the fact that, A, that in itself was genius as a plan and heist, but the fact that someone is obviously, obviously it's a TV show, it's fictional, has written that, so obviously come up with the heist in their mind anyway, and then incorporated it into a TV show, is just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I'm loving the fact that every episode I'm like, this is going to happen. This is why. And it happens. And I'm just sat there like, me. I could pull off a money heist. Look at me. I'm basically one of them. But do you know so, what I think? I, I always think, because I watch a lot of crime stuff, I always thought yeah. I'd be quite good at, like, not, not necessarily robbing. I wouldn't want to rob anything. But, like, figuring stuff out and, like, strategizing yeah. and things like that. But there have been moments in this show where the robbers have done stuff I'm like, oh, well, they're screwed now. Like the police are onto them. There's no way out of this situation. And then suddenly they managed to get themselves out of the situation in the most incredible way ever. So true, so true. But um, what city name would you be? I think Chicago or... Well, the thing I is, you have to remember, they, it would be in Spanish, wouldn't it? So would it be the Spanish translation of the the city because we would obviously say like I don't know what it is in the show if they call them um because obviously uh oh no I can't say that that would be a spoiler but <laughs> one of the one of the um characters oh I can't say that either that's a spoiler for you because you haven't got to season three no. I don't know what it would be I feel like maybe Sydney I could see you as a Sydney. Mm. I, I think you'd be I a like good. That. Tokyo. No, Me. Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> I was like, wait, someone already has that name. <laughs> no, Chicago. I think that's a good one. Apparently, I was researching, mm. obviously, the show because that's what I do. And they decided the names of. So this is. Mm, is it a spoiler I don't know in season three there's other people that come in as robbers 
and um, obviously they have to come up with new names, but apparently they used, so again, this is kind of like Ships Creek, where in the sense that initially it was released on a Spanish network, and then it was bought by Netflix two years down the line. So apparently when they were coming up with the show for season three and four, when new people come in, they were using names of cities where the viewership and audience of the show had been really high. I love that. I know. How, how cool. Love that. Ooh, I'm going to predict because I'm still on season two. Um, though I think we're on episode 10 now. Um, just for Evie's context. So her eyes are going to be like, ah, she knows this now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm going to see if I can predict what the names are going to be. Okay. Mm, there's, that'll be a fun little task. There's one, two, three, four. Ooh. But I can think of a new. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to say them because I want you guys to watch, but it really is a good show. And it's not my normal cup of tea. I wouldn't say it's your normal cup of tea either, but it is phenomenal. It is in the fact that it's like crime and it's thriller and it's, it's a complicated plot line, which Evie is quite good at following. Whereas I just like easy watching. I like an easy life. Mm-hmm. My my taste and Evie's mum's taste are more aligned most of the time than Evie and I. Yeah, um, I love a good BBC documentary, a drama. Yeah, I just like an easy life. On that note, how many shows have we done? We've done three, so I think it is time for a lovely little icebreaker. Okay, Evie, well I have it here. Thing. And this icebreaker is more, I feel like this would have actually been a better icebreaker for last week, but we'll move past it. So this is a would you rather, and it is, would you rather never have to work again or have to work, but have it be your dream job? Oh, easy, dream job. Yeah. I would get so bored. I know. I mean, for when I'm a pensioner and I'm going to be globetrotting like no one's business but I like working it gives my brain a little exercise it's like a treadmill for my brain Um, thing is what's funny though is I saw this this question on someone's Instagram as a poll and I straight away clicked dream job because to me that's just but you'd be surprised how many people would rather not work at all for the rest of their life and just because essentially this this question isn't taking into account money. Um, so I would assume that in this instance, you're financially stable in either option. It's just whether you would rather not work and go and travel and do whatever you want to do or yeah. have to work but be in your dream career. I think that's if, where it's coming from. If it's your dream job, I don't think you'd think of it as work. I think you'd think of it as like, this is just my life. This is what I've always seen myself. And I guarantee those people that said no probably don't like their jobs. Or is that a bit of a meme? Exactly. I thought that. No, I think that's so true. And that's why I think it was important last week when we were talking about doing something you enjoy, something you love, make sure you're happy. Like, that's the most important thing. I love this little story arch. I know. You know who the director will be. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, should we end with a little... A little quote? A little quote. Hit me with it. Inspire I will me. say that yours last week, again, going back to last week, uh, was way more intellectual than this one. But A, it ties into one of the actors in the shows <gasps> that we mentioned. And I also think this quote can be applied to so many different things and has like a deep message. So Ooh, hit me with it. So the quote is from Dan Levy. I think it's Levy, not Levy. Or maybe mm. it's Levy. I think it's Levy. I think it's Levy. Yeah, now that I'm saying it, I think it's Levy. Evie. I know. Or is it Evi? <laughs> okay, Imogen. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so the quote is from Dan Levy, and it says, oh, by the way, Dan Levy plays David in Schitt's Creek, for those of you who don't know. Also, I we didn't mention, which is one of the most, like, me, in my opinion, just the most incredible things ever, yes is you know what I'm gonna say is that Schitt's Creek first of all has Dan Levy in it who plays David 
And Dan Levy's real life dad is called Eugene Levy, who is also an actor, very famous. And Eugene plays Johnny. So they play father and son, and they are father and son. And also, Dan Levy created the show, wrote the show, stars in the show, is just... He was everything. He embodies the show. Yeah, he is Shit's Creek, yeah. Anyway, so the quote is from Dan Levy, and and it says, A little confidence can make the simplest of t-shirts look like a million bucks. Bravo. Yeah. Love that. Exactly. It's like no matter what you you're go, what's going on, what you're doing, what you look like, if you're just confident in yourself and your yeah. you know behavior and whatever, you're on a winning streak. Yeah. Oh, love that. Let's just you know. leave it there. Shall we tell them what we're going to do next week then? So next week we are doing podcasts. We certainly are. So get your little little hats on. Yep. We'll have another breaker, another quote. And I've got a few podcasts up my sleeve that I can't wait to share with you all. I have too. I'm very excited. And varying, <laughs> actually. Some drama, some crime, some... I feel like I'm saying too much. Ooh, I need some good rec. So I'm going to be... I'm going to listen out for yours. Ooh, I'll listen out for yours too. Well, cheers to that episode. And we will see you next week.